Hello and welcome um, to another episode of Aspects of the Empire Strikes Back. And we're going to be dealing with uh, following up the bubbling episode that I did. This is going to be oscillations of various things. That includes tremolandos, tremolos, um, and finger trills, uh, finger trem, um, that sort of thing. So instead of a trill, um, you get an oscillation between the first and third fingers. So it's going to be a major third, minor third, etc. up until about a perfect fourth is um, what's possible, unachievable with fingers. And then uh, with open strings, you can do anything because, of course, you're tremolandering the open string. That sort of idea. Um, and if you want to know more about that sort of technique, um, just individually, then I'd definitely have a look at Bach's violin and cello suites, uh, sonatas, partitas, that sort of thing, because it's all dealt with in there. The viola um, generally is cello arranged, um, so they will all, all be in there. Whatever's possible on the violin is possible on the viola, um, and likewise uh, with the cello as well, pretty much. Um, so I'm dealing with all of this sort of thing. So I thought I'd start with this sort of first oscillation, which is from M, uh, 1M1, 1M28. And I'm just going to go through everything as much as I can, <laughs> sort of chronologically, as I, as I sort of come across it. Um, so really, it's this configuration which is really important. Um, so where we have a root, the fifth, and then the third, um, that's quite an important um, aspect of um, orchestration and voicing. You know, that sort of basic triad, that, that sort of shape, it's very difficult to see here, but um, that shape is, is very uncommon because the third gets in the way of the other root note. The, having the fifth there is part of the upper partial of the root note, and so it, it then resonates more, and also it's much easier to play um, as well. Um, so in this, um, you've sort of got... Um, open well uh, one one th two I think or one one three that sort of thing, um, so it's actually quite easy to play in terms of the 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 fingering and the string crossing. It's a little bit awkward at the speed that it's done, so it goes quite quickly here. There we go, uh, especially diminuendoing as well, and then you've got this sort of slightly strange awkward bit where we got that major minor chord that sort of thing going on here um, I'm actually going to go back to the reduction of that um, all of these things can be found on my Patreon um, if you would like to um, join that um, or if you feel able to at least um, so I've labeled these in various different ways across the um, across the time I'm doing it um, so because I'm sort of pitch class set theory type person I tend to sort of do that first but actually you know other people find it much more helpful to just go no it's just C above D flat or, or whatever um, C above A C above E org um, there are all sorts of different ways of describing it it's just the way I've described it but it's not necessarily the only way and, and it's worth bearing in mind that it isn't just one of the only ways um, but he does tend to sort of separate things out in terms of chordal functions so all the D flat stuff is in the bass line which is hence why it's lower and all the C stuff seems to be in the treble part as well um, there's a little bit of crossover um, so for example we've got one of the A flats sort of let's say infiltrating <laughs> uh, the upper extension um, so that there's we, we get this sort of idea of C augmented really except that we also get the G as well. So there are all sorts of different ways of describing it. So you could say it's C above D flat, but you could also say it's an augmented A flat chord with a major seventh, or you could say it's a major chord with a flat six above D flat. Um, so there are lots of different ways of um, labeling this sort of thing, um, which is important to, to kind of know. Um, but the main thing is that they often swap notes. Um, so if I take this bar here, so um, different notes, same notes, different notes. So all the A flats are the same. So this bit here in the viola, 
It's still quite awkward at that speed, but basically it's all in first position, so it's all easy, I mean, in terms of, um, you know, um, professionalism. So three, one, four, one, four, one, three, one, four, one, four, one. Um, and then one, three, one, um, that's easy to do. And, and uh, honestly, you know, um, uh, having even a basic grasp of string technique of fingering can be really, really helpful in terms of what you think lies under the fingers well, because if you can sort of replicate it, um, then that works quite well. So what I would advise is to get um, even just to draw yourself a fretboard um, and just work out, you know, on your arm, um, like a guitar, sort of pressing your finger first, second, third, fourth, and they just go alphabetically. So if the last, if the open string is G, if you put your first finger on, it's going to be an A. Second finger on, it's going to be some sort of B, whether it's a B flat or a B natural. Third finger is going to be C. Fourth finger is going to be D, which is also coincidentally the next string up. Um, so if you always have that in mind, then that is quite a useful thing. So um, it's this sort of technique of um, kind of bubbling but this time with oscillations in arpeggiated um, chords. So now we are getting into a technique here, which is one of um, Williams's ways of getting from A to B. So this is B in terms of it's going to morph into that, but uh, a is this sort of arpeggiation. So he then just takes the top two notes in the first violins. Notice everybody else is playing exactly the same thing and kind of fading out. But violin one, it's changed. So it's more of that sort of finger trem, but measured in tuplets. And then it's a proper finger trem or a trill at that point. And often they're written out um, in Williams's uh, parts as well, rather than just having a trill. Um, just um, It's just convention, I think, rather than anything else. It doesn't really make much difference. But here we've got um, that finger trem, um, which is unmeasured, um, but with an unmeasured bowed trem as well. Um, so interestingly enough, fingered trem is just not something that you get a lot in um, sample libraries. I think I can only think of one, um, which is the Spitfire Chamber Strings, but somebody might be able to um, tell me I'm wrong. Um, I, I would imagine that Vienna must have it, surely. Um, but I haven't seen it um, that commonly. Um, so uh, this is what it sounds like with the violas. There we go. So it's used as a chordal function. It's not a melodic function at all. Um, and I, by the way, I'm only dealing with strings at this point. Um, but of course, it's supporting um, other things that are going on above it. Um, so it's this bit in the cue. Um, so it, it's it's very much a supporting role. But without it, it you really miss that um, fizz, I suppose. Um, so we could call it fizzing, um, you know, bubbling, fizzing, that sort of idea. It's energy, basically. It doesn't need much, but it just needs something. And then when we get onto this bit here... Um, obviously, it's even more energetic with all of them doing the same thing. And then we've got this sort of rather strange septuplet in the cello as well. There we go. Um, so back to the um, this bit here. Um, that's the wrong key. <laughs> Just instantly knew it's the wrong key. Um, so it's going to be here. So that's what it looks like in short score. Um, so you can see how, um, you know, at this point, sometimes there's um, space and then not much space. So that they can do that basically um, so the way it's written um, so here we've got an augmented second um, same as minor third and then uh, major third um, so uh, major third ba -bum, perfect fourth so you can see that there's there's quite a lot of sort of variety of um, 
intervalitness going on. That's not a word, is it? But I've just made it up. Um, but we get that sort of really nice fizzing, bubbling sort of sound. There's just a way of making a chord more energetic rather than just having a, a long note value. Um, so it's definitely something that is used frequently. And in fact, if we go into, let's say, just the first violin part here, um, obviously it looks terrible. But you can see there's an enormous amount of tremolando, um, or tremolo effects or oscillations, pretty much all the way through. Um, and then we've got the sort of measured um, stuff as well. Um, but, you know, the majority of it is trem, um, which is really interesting all the way through. Very... Um, very rarely is it just sort of long note values, which is a real sort of thing. Um, so it's definitely worth bearing in mind that, you know, there are quite a lot of cues, especially atmospheric ones that tend to do that. Um, so I'm not going to save that. Um, so let's move on to the next cue. Um, and this was one that we've, we've already looked at, really, um, in the bubbling, um, which is this sort of uh, idea of the alle aleatoric strings. So this is from 1M3. Um, Luke's escape. So I'm going to try and open the main score for that. Um, so yes, you can see as fast as possible, play all of those notes. And there doesn't seem to be uh, much correlation, but we have got little bits of things. So he, he loves that sort of Locrian mode type stuff, optotonicism as well. Um, two chromatic collections together a tritone apart. So it means that you might start off with a this sort of idea but then start another one there like that so you you know having uh, chromatic collections but a tritone apart so C and F sharp there sort of easier to see at this point we can get sort of a really nice sort of cluster effect without using all the 12 pitches of, of the chromatic scale as well. Um, so that really is bubbling and then we're getting into more of the oscillation as well. Um, so in this case um, it's interesting how look you know Divisi A3 even with that the, the limited amount of cellos that he has probably only 12 cellos. So very can't really hear it at that point. So uh, we, we've got those sort of oscillations going on here, again playing a chordal function, um, and this time, um, you know, G sharp minor. But notice it tends often to be in second inversion, so in other words with the fifth in the bass, uh, even if the root note is played by the, the double basses or the contrabass. Um, so here we've got two chords, so we've got B minor and G sharp minor, which are oscillating together. Um, so, or flat, A flat minor, G sharp minor, whatever. Uh, sometimes the, he uses both G sharp minor and A flat minor, um, depending on what it is. I think there's a sort of, um, there seems to be a sort of really weird mythology that string players don't like playing flats. Um, but they don't like playing sharps either. So <laughs> it's sort of, um, I'd, I'd much rather read a flat key signature than a sharp key signature any day. Um, I can sort of deal with a double flat easier than I can deal with a double sharp. Um, I don't know why, but it also seems, you know, sharp seems very brighter um, for a non-tempered instrument as well. So I, I prefer flats, but that, maybe that's just me. I don't know. Um, but there's always been a sort of strange mythology about um, string players reading sharps and flats, which were the, which do they prefer. And quite frankly, I don't think it makes any difference, really, uh, to be honest. <laughs> Um, so then we've got sort of interesting things here. Of course, there's a lot going on, um, which I've already dealt with in previous things. So we won't really deal with the notes as such. But, um, you know, interesting tremolando gliss effects, which are sort of, you know, um, overlapping, which is common. You can't really hear it on this sort of thing at all, because it won't play it, unless I program it all in and I really really can't be bothered to do that in Sibelius at least I mean do it for a um, a, a render definitely um, but interestingly enough um, you know it tends to sort of um, try and do the same thing that other things are doing as well um, often at this point um, it's just pure effect um, 
it up to the highest note, sort of slow gliss effects. Um, so that is quite common uh, as well. Um, so then we've got even more sort of Chamolando effects, sometimes which start from uh, a position of just open string, which then morph into it with no discernible bow change. Yeah, there would be no gap like that. So another bubbling effect, and then we get the true bubbling that we had before, uh, which goes all the way through. Um, merging into these detached, um, measured trem. And then you can see here that we've got it always does that um, uh, where you've got um, gliss to highest note this time it's not trimmed um, but uh, then it goes back to it as well uh, that's just uh, an edit actually um, then measured trim as well so uh, even in this particular thing there's a huge amount of that going on um, if we just sort of go into that um, yet yeah, terrible looking uh, score because it's not set up for parts at all uh, but you can again see that the majority of notes are tremolando effects or that's this sort of bubbling texture, um, which is sort of apt because it comes in a part of the film where that it, it, it's warranted. Um, so let's go on to um, 2M2 Ben's instructions. Um, this is where we hear the force theme quite a bit as well. Um, so this is an interesting one which I haven't seen that much of before. Um, so in this case, uh, we've got the sort of uh, bubbling uh, viola part, um, which is just doing one little thing. We've got tremolando and trills as well. So all sorts of different techniques here and artificial harmonics. So this one is an artificial harmonic, um, which is invariably with the perfect fourth above. I've seen people who say touch five, touch three, it almost... Um, non-existent in the orchestral repertoire i wouldn't even bother um ever doing that um, unless you have huge you, you'll have huge problems in recording it uh, to get it in tune i would only ever um use it really with um unless it's a a, a node um on the violin um I, in terms of a a, a non-artificial harmonic i wouldn't actually bother um always use perfect fourth uh, which means the bottom note uh, will sound two octaves above um, so this one is a tremolando, detached tremolando, which is also glissing and an artificial harmonic to the highest note possible as well. I won't play it, but um, you can certainly hear that in Ben's instructions 2 and 2. Um, so in, in amongst that, we've also got trills, um, where we, we also have a sort of that bubbling effect. Almost like a timpani roll, it sort of has that same effect. And look, we also have gliss timpani as well, where the, they're, they're going to release the pedal so that it goes, uh, so the um, skin uh, contracts so it goes lower in pitch. Um, so, yeah, it's often combined with, with similar effects, especially in sort of things like Celeste, you know, this sort of idea, which is ridiculous. <laughs> you know, and it just continues. Um, so more bubbling, uh, tremolando, here we go, uh, let's go from here. This is above the force theme. So that's interesting when he does put sort of you know non trem notes in just sort of single note values he still retains the tremolando in the viola and cello and then we've got more of it going on here um where it sort of ends from the force theme force theme brilliant um so interestingly here there's uh, you know he's decided not to have the um the oscillation between b and c in the violins at that point um it seems to sort of he wants that extended note which is supporting what the woodwind are doing at that point 
and what the horn's doing. So it's almost joining the melody. But then we've got the bubbling effect, this tremolando as well, or finger trem. Um, it's not doing it properly, but it, it should do. Um, so uh, sometimes to stop that uh, in here, you have to go to dictionary, uh, go to articulations, uh, go there, unmeasure it, and then copy it to that, which it already is actually, but so I don't know why it's not doing it properly, but there we go. <laughs> Um, again, as I say, you know, a fingered trem um, is just it, it, quite rare in any sample library, and this includes Note Performer, which is what this thing's using. Um, so I think that is it for that. There's a little bit more as well, right at the end. Again, tremolo effects. Yeah, with with just long note values that just won't work you, you won't have the energy required for everything else and of course because it's going higher but yeah it's like a sort of pleading um sort of motif um it's supporting it all chordal function So more bubbling in the viola. Half a section. Absolutely no point using half a section if you don't have enough uh, violins in the first place. Um, worth bearing in mind. And then it goes on as well. More supporting harmonic roll or trem. Which is the massive gliss. Sort of very cold sound. There we go, and that's the end of that. Um, it's a pretty nice cue, actually, sort of listening to it again. Sort of think, wow, gosh, he he really does know what he's doing. Uh, Luke's Rescue is exactly the same as to Hyperspace, so um, it's not really much. And then the rest of it is from the um, bit where he's in the back to tank. Um, and I think the implication is that he's, mem he's remembering what happened in the Wampa cave. Um, hence more bubbling but it's exactly the same as when he got captured so there's no point repeating what's already been done there um the next cue is imperial march i don't think there's any of those effects in here it's all march like um i think the only bit that i remember with that is when he sort of consults the emperor but i think well, even then it's not particularly um tremolandery and then we're into the hoth um sequence after this um at that point um yeah, this is a, a common one where you have that little measured trem um, just sort of suddenly appearing and then disappearing. This is part of three in one drawing the battle lines. So it's coming up here. And then it relaxes. So got, it's interesting having that little bit of energy and then suddenly dissipating um, at that point, and then it's sort of Imperial March from then on. Um, yeah, a little bit of oscillation here. So let's just go into that, actually. a trend there. Arp synth. Yeah. And they, they kind of make use of that organ sound. So without the strings, if I just play this... Um, it sounds very thin, kind of, just like an organ. So now again, but with the strings. Yeah. 
that sort of energetic bubbling fizzing sort of sound that you've got the sort of fingered trem uh, trill like effects um so just on their own and here That's interesting. So viola is replicating exactly what uh, violin two is doing, and it's all octatonic at this point um, as well, I think. Yeah, or harmonic minor. They're almost interchangeable sometimes. So you, you, you've got this sort of... Um, that, that sort of idea. Um... You know, any combination of both is going to be perfectly acceptable. That's the Hungarian minor. That's all of them together. That they all sort of morph into one eventually. Um, sort of all sort of rather indefinable. Well, they're not indefinable because I've just defined them, but <laughs> uh, but they they separate out very easily. Uh, so more of that. Um, digga 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 digga. So here when it's um, here, obviously, we've got a separate note per semiquaver, but now separate notes per quaver. So actually, it's slowing down. What's the effect of that? Yeah, so it's almost like the end credits. Um, digga, 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 dum. Um, idea as well but it's interesting how suddenly it goes from a melodic role into a sort of um, an arpeggiated role um, so a harmonic role um, even though we've already got harmony here supporting it um, so in terms of what the brass are doing at that point so melody harmony melody Um, and then we've got a little bit more of that sort of triumphant trill. Like the beginning. I uh, don't know what's going on with the... Um, there was something very strange. It sounded like a sort of... I don't know what it was, but it was very odd. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so then we're suddenly into the tremolando... Uh, effect again. Um, so we've seen it in every cue so far. That fizzing. Uh, and of course when it's played properly you wouldn't get that sort of uh, join between notes. Of course it would just be played in one continuous uh, fashion. But you can see the difference between just having a normal trill and then this oscillation between uh, violin twos would be divided of course so one and four. Um, but, um, so that might be played in third position as well so a three and a two but in third position um, I'll talk about positions another time but maybe Xanthi will talk about it in one of her uh, videos as well I'm sure she's mentioned that before um, so I think that is it for that one but it's interesting seeing that in a slightly different context I think um, that was sort of triumphant triumphalism um, then we're into snow battle so uh, which is massive of course um, let's just have a quick look at the violin part, uh, what there is of it. Um, so there's a little bit of measured trem at that point, and then, yes, look at that. So it, quite a large amount of oscillations as well. So let's actually go into the score briefly. Um, we've heard this so many times. Well, I've heard this a lot of times. So measured trem uh, with lots of stuff going on. <laughs> Typical sort of um, Williams idea where you've got those sort of long notes um, and then, uh, yeah, digga digga da, you know, this sort of incredible sort of long notes, but lots of repeated horns as well. Dun, 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 dun. Um, so not really bubbling at that point, and then we do get the fizz. So let's do the lead up to the fizz section here. Yeah. 
remember it taking me absolutely ages to notate that. Um, just takes so long to do. It doesn't matter what program you're in. It's always going to take a long time because there's just lots of fiddly notes to do. Um, uh, and especially when you've got sort of like little ornaments at the end or beginnings of them as well. Um, so uh, an absolute nightmare. But this one, it seems to be in unison uh, with the first and seconds and then viola's just playing an octave lower um, and mostly semitonal trills, but in, in other words, measured fin uh, sorry, unmeasured finger tremolo um, or a trill. But I think um, Gardner Reed calls it finger trem. So there we go. Um, I think that's mainly it, but let's sort of see if there's anything else. Um, I love that bit uh, in, in this bit. <laughs> It's just so it's just ridiculous so yes look here we go there's a little bit that's the bar lead up to it short longs yeah so another bit of the sort of modular effect um, so this time first and seconds in octaves Um, and in terms of notes, it's a real mixture of um, sort of minor and major seconds, sort of octatonic, and then a bit of harmonic minor as well. So again, it's it's one of the bits where he sort of um, merges the two. Um, and there's that release cable moment. Um, and then just that little bit right at the end. A little bit of measured stuff. Yeah, almost don't really um, hear it at all um, in that bit. Um, and then, of course, it goes straight on into Luke's first crash. So it's a it's an absolutely mammoth cue. Um, so all of that is sort of... Um, unison strings. Uh, yes, yeah, so a measured tremolo from here. Let's have a lead bar in. And uh, again, sort of unison. Yeah, just a word about rhythm. It's really interesting, isn't it? We've got that quaver pulse going, um, which seems to be in sort of trombones and bassoons. Here we go. Yeah, so it's, it's one of the, the sort of motifs. Um, but then everything else is on the offbeat, so... really interesting and and here that there's definitely an emphasis on the two uh, of four four um and then a sort of nice little octatonic moment um whilst we got the imperial march uh then typical sort of um scalic strings all measured detache um a little bit of almost bubbling more of a sort of florid swirl really and then we've got this sort of big scale again in measured trim semi quavers yeah um, sort of very heavy sound uh, more tremolando here So here we've got all of those and they're supported by the f horns five and six. Um, so that sort of Brahmsian uh, thumb third five idea. Uh, so in terms of what it looks like, um, that sort of idea, that figuration, thumb third five. Whoops, I was in edit mode. 
Um, but this is what it sounds like. Sorry, I want to do what it sounds like with just horn five and six and the, the, the channel. Blends really nicely. Goes on for quite a while. Then the second, third and fourth horns take over. And then more measured trend. Here we go. More measured trend. You see that it in this sort of action cue, it, it's quite frequently to have measured stuff and unmeasured stuff as well in the strings. Back to that end credit stuff, and then we're into sort of thematic stuff. Is there anything else? Um, sometimes he combines it with other textures as well so this is an interesting one here yeah <laughs> so a lot of lot of things and then uh, I should have just kept playing it actually so more trem coming up Um, so then back into the Starry Night type of uh, texture. All in unison. Octaves. Lots of filigree in there. Yeah, so um, sort of absolutely relentless um, at that point as well. Um, I think what I did is I actually put that into another queue, um, which was Rebels Escape again, which I'll just go to. So. Um, Da, 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 da. Um, so any more trems here? Not really. We're, we're in sort of real string territory. Look how long that texture lasts for, though. Um, so quite a while. Um, it's about almost 45 bars of the same sort of texture, um, which is actually quite long uh, with Williams. Um, and then it goes back to it almost immediately ramps it up with a little bit of those semi-quavers as well. It's a sort of technique which um, I've definitely learnt from. Um, and then more scalic runs, which is not something we're, we're particularly focusing on today. Um, I'm just sort of trying to go through some of it really here. Yeah, so at that point Viola's doing this. So this is, I mean, quite unusually um, where it's going into the Han and Leia uh, moment. We got melodic aspects, we got a bass line, and we got the melody, which we haven't really had up until at that point, interestingly, textually, at least in this cue anyway. Yeah, so without all the sort of bells and frills and, and um, you know, all, all of the sort of filigree, it's interesting we still got virtually everything in the strings blended. Definitely a compliment. Notice that measured trend is still going on. And then it stops finally at that point where the horns take over the um, the sort of repetitiveness of it. Um, so then it, it goes back to it a few bars later. More trem. 
measure train. It's what Frank calls Lydian afterglow, which I think is hilarious. Um, <laughs> brilliant. Um, there's no better way of describing it, really. Um, and then I'll just do the asteroid field. Um, uh, so a lot of Imperial March at this point. Um, so what else have we got in the terms of sort of trem? Let's sort of keep going. Uh, um, yes, yeah, so actually, interestingly enough, all the way through, da -da -da -bum, da -da -da, look at these violas. Ooh, get that fizz. Very, very effective with um, all of those trombones. That's really interesting. Notice how, um, just as an aside, notice how uh, the orchestrator gives some breathing room to uh, the trombones at that point because they couldn't possibly play it all the way through. Um, uh, and uh, they're changing position trombones all, all the way through. But but it really adds this fizz, this sort of measured um, semi-quavers, basically. that viola part all the way through um sort of interesting how it appears so it starts at bar 49 with this sort of measured trem uh goes on pretty much until bar 76 um so it's quite a long time then it goes back to it again at 120 which then lasts up until wow so 104 well uh yes until 134 you can see it's sort of ramping up um, at that point here da -da -ba -ba -ba. really interesting just to take a line this is the beauty of having sort of done all of this work on it is that you can kind of just follow one part and go oh that's what it does that's what it's supposed to look like um when you're doing it uh, so then 147 let's go to that uh look at that how cool is that um so more oscillations Nice. That's interesting. So it's that sort of big Millennium Falcon dive um, with the, the massive filigree that you've got going on. Love how the clarinets just stop, by the way, as the flutes and oboes take over. Yeah, quite low, sort of uh, honky um, right at the end, but, but sort of unavoidable, really. But notice what the strings are doing at that point as well. So they're really supporting that. And also notice that the rhythmic, uh, the harmonic rhythm has changed. So at this point, um, they're going in crotchets and then minims. So quarter notes and then half note values. Um, and then we've got that sort of um, again, sort of um, at this point, sort of harmonic. Um, this would all be false harmonics, um, tremolando to other harmonics. Um, which is worth bearing in mind, actually. You've got this sort of... <laughs> terrible sound. Yeah, that's a very common device, actually, in Debussy, particularly, where you've got this sort of mixed um, uh, articulations where you've got flutes perhaps doing um, this sort of, you know, staccato detached notes, and then you've got um, unmeasured trem um, as well in quavers just doing the same notes um, 
which are all in thirds at that point as well. Notice how we got two flutes at that point. I think uh, there would be a fourth flute in here. I think this was before I had access to the orchestrator score, so there would be a fourth flute doing the same thing as the third flute at that point. Um, and that's the end of that one. Um, so I think that's probably enough uh, for today. Um, but we've done uh, up to 4M3, um, which is about a third of the film um, already. But you can see, I mean, you know, there's, there's such a wealth... Um, of information going on so that's 45 minutes worth of just talking about those sort of trem trill measured trem unmeasured trems finger trem um, ideas all the way through that score um, and they really have lots of different roles sometimes um, you know a harmonic role uh, sometimes just a, a completely supportive role in terms of melody uh, just sort of texturally filling it filling things out um, and um, to add fizz and excitement um, so that's the the second part of the bubbling um, type of episode that we've done um, and I look forward to continuing it um, so I'll speak to you soon <laughs>